so part two of the uh, Flex Max, the Outback Flex Max FM80. So it was covered in uh, fire extinguisher dry chemical. And uh, so I literally went ahead and uh, put it in the shower and hosed it off with, uh, with hot water. Um, don't worry, I'm, I'm going to dry it off uh, thoroughly. Um, but this worked for, for most of the junk that was on there. Um, there are better ways with isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol and such, but there was so much on there I didn't know what to do. To dry it out, I put it in my Harvest Made Food Dehydrator. Um, I put it in there, had it in there for uh, whoa, about 8 or 9 hours. Basically, it blow, blows warm to hot air and it just keeps circulating it to dry out food. So it's perfect for a dry out um, soaking wet PCB boards. <clears throat> so it seemed to work pretty well. Like I say, it was in there all day. And while that was in there, I went to work on the, on the, the front of it, which of course I couldn't soak in water, the LCD, etc. Because um, it would absolutely destroy that. So I took a toothbrush and cleaned it all off and uh, it polished up pretty well. Uh, there was still some residue on it after, but once it dried out, some white residue didn't look as, as nice and black as I, as I hoped it would. But got most of the junk off there. <clears throat> and what I'll do is um, I'll just polish it up so I can sell it. For parts, basically, to the to the next guy, um, but I shouldn't spoil the uh, spoil the fun. So after after the day was over, it was uh, about eight or nine hours in there. I went out, uh, I, or I pulled it out of the uh, dehydrator. It was nice and warm at this point, well warmed up, and so very very dry everywhere. And um, I was uh, confident enough uh, that it was um, dry enough to uh, attempt to assemble it again. Here's a closer look at the components here. Um, you can see all the all the resistors in there, um, the MOSFETs, etc. Everything looks, you know, fairly. Uh, I mean, it's not clean, but um, there's no uh, bridged connections or, or gunk in between there to any significant amount. So from that point of view, the circuit board itself looks okay. It looks a lot better than it did, uh, but it's certainly not perfect. And there was residue on the capacitors, etc. Uh, the MOSFETs were a little bit dirty on the outside. It wasn't a perfect cleaning job. Um, honestly, with this sort of thing, you're gonna you're gonna uh, scavenge parts off it. You're not gonna try and clean something like this um, when a short happens. Now I did find this what I think is a voltage regulator, and it's hard to see, but the leg has burnt off, so it's it's been uh, burnt out, unfortunately. And this is the board for this is the auxiliary power supply. So I don't know if, it, if this is actually required to power. The LCD or wait to the Outback Power Auxiliary Supply. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what that's meant for, and maybe that's the whole reason. Um, I didn't have so much success in the end with this, um, but I don't have components to, to fiddle with that, and I don't even know if that was anywhere close to being the, all the issues um, that this particular had, uh, particular uh, one had after being hosed down with a dry chemical from a fire extinguisher. <clears throat> Next thing I did was I got to taking up the LCD um, because the ribbon cable, uh, you'll notice I cut the ribbon cable down to where it wasn't melted anymore because I'm going to stick that back in uh, the connector. But at that point it was too short to actually leave in the casing. Um, it was way too short. I had to cut 50% of the length uh, off it. Um, and of course this was dirty as well so I took the toothbrush uh, to this just packed with uh, dry chemical. Apparently the dry chemical is not particularly toxic. It, it's not nice. It will um, it will uh, agitate, I guess, your throat or whatever if you breathe in too much of it in. But it's not overly toxic, which is nice. Now I did Google that, uh, and most are are picked uh, for safety reasons. So here's a ribbon cable. I was trying to push the ribbon cable in. You, you basically press it into little uh, little claws that grab the wires. I think I got close, and this may have been a large part of my issue as well. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't perfect here uh, for getting all the uh, the metal through and getting all the contacts made, which may or may not uh, be part of the issue as well. Again, I, I couldn't see any particular voltage through there, so I have no idea um, uh, where at this point the board was failing. Uh, actually, I hadn't even lit it up at this point uh, yet. You can see the uh, the coils there are uh, a lot cleaner than they were. So what I did was I got my 12 uh, volt battery pack and I just cut a wire so I could stick it in the battery positive and negative terminal and just see if I would get any spark of life at all out of this thing. 
And the connectors themselves are good. I mean, this, this unit has uh, lots of parts that could be used. So I go ahead and uh, plug in the uh, positive and negative battery um, just to see what it will do, basically. I want to see the uh, LCD light up. So here I actually attempted to power it on. I provided 12 volts to it, and that's why I was zoomed in. <clears throat> but uh, nothing happened, so... I then got out, out the, uh, the voltmeter just to confirm that there was voltage on the contacts, etc. Um, and uh, it didn't seem like anything was happening, unfortunately. Well, to sum up to a sad story, I think this thing is beyond my capability to repair. So what I did, I probably explained it, but I put 12 volts in here. I'll, I'll try putting 12 volts in this in the uh, photovoltaic ports and uh, pop something over there. I'm not sure what. I couldn't see it, but something popped and smoked. So this board would be good for parts. Um, that you know, the case would be good for parts. I don't know when you'd ever need those sorts of parts, but I assume the rest of the components are good. Like this screen is probably still quite usable. Um, but I don't know, it doesn't seem otherwise. Um, I kind of mashed this uh, ribbon cable on the board there. Otherwise, I think you'd have to trace through all the circuitry and figure out what's blown. I know there's a little, I don't know what it is, a, a voltage regulator there that's uh, blown. And I don't know what else. I don't really know how to trace this board through. I don't know what components would be good on here. I assume, actually, these two coils uh, would actually be good, these inductors. I think they're called inductors. <clears throat> I think those will be good. Um, probably reusable by whomever might need them. But uh, otherwise, you know, there's, there's probably some other good components on here, like I say, like maybe if someone needed some of these uh, screw, screw locks or something. And I'm sure a bunch of the capacitors are still good, and there's a couple of switches in there. I don't know if those are usable. But I kind of did my best. I, uh, I kind of washed it out and uh, did what I could. So what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll put it all back together the way it was and uh, put it back on eBay and maybe if someone wants to use it. I got it for parts, um, broken or for parts, and um, that's exactly what it is. It's broken and it's for parts. So I'm going to do a... I'll do a, another video when I get it all back together here. Um, but I got it all cleaned up, so I think it's going to look uh, much nicer than at least it did when I got it. And unfortunately, I won't be able to use it, but I will be able to put it up against the Midnight Classic 150, just so you can see a size comparison, etc. So it's my first experience with an FM80, FM I should say, and it's certainly uh, interesting to look inside and to tinker with. Um, but yeah, like I said, this could be fixed. I'm sure an uh, electronics guy could go through here, replace some resistors and capacitors or whatever, get this thing going in. Um, but since I got that Midnight Classic on the way, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to put any more time into this. Just do a comparison beside beside the Classic 150 and and uh, get this off to the next guy who may need some parts from from this unit. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and of course, beware what you buy on eBay. I kind of I kind of figured that he wasn't telling the whole truth, um, or that he just had absolutely zero idea. And of course, the pictures um, they do say a thousand words, but it's hard to tell from pictures as well uh, what's wrong with it. So in this case, I you know if I saw the picture of the uh, the cable, um, I may or may not have thought differently about it, uh, but you couldn't really see that from the photos on eBay. So yeah, it's interesting. Interesting look at the uh, FM80 board for the Outback Flex Max. And uh, yeah, this will be going to the next guy, and maybe he can repair it. There's certainly some good parts on it. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll, I'll probably uh, at the end here. I'll do a time lapse. I'll put it all back together, and we'll take a look at it at the end. So, thanks for watching, guys. A little two-part series. Hope you found that uh, kind of interesting. Anyways, to see some guy uh, take apart uh, an FM80. It was interesting um, to to take apart at least and get some experience and see what's inside it. Because um, I will be dealing with the uh, the uh, Midnight Classic 150. And I'll be able to sell this one for parts, like I, like I said a few times, I suppose. And um, But yeah, I'll be able to compare it directly against uh, the Midnight Classic. And uh, for this one, I'll just put it on eBay and sell it for parts and, and tell them what's up with it and what I did to it. Um, but otherwise, uh, hope you just found that interesting. And uh, it's uh, unfortunate I couldn't get it going. I, I had high hopes for it. You never know. And I, and I often get uh, 
units off eBay broken, and uh, often, uh, in many cases, I get them working, or there was nothing wrong with them in the first place. Just a little bit of cleaning uh, and polishing fixed them up. So, in this case, not so much, but interesting experience nonetheless. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.